Hello everyone and welcome to Thursday Live Lessons here on Ukulele Underground. My name is Aldrin Guerrero, joined by Mr. Aaron the Voice Now Commercial. What's up, Aaron? What's up? Mr. Kahai the Legend Fergan, say what's up, Kahai? What's up? Hello everyone, we are live. It's 1 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. We are live and this is definitely the first time we're doing this today. Right, gentlemen? <laughs> definitely the first Thursday Live Lesson that we've done today. I don't know why you would point it out. I, it's so just weird. Saying, you know, Such I'm a just... weird aside. <laughs> <laughs> now, I but I will predict. I have a prediction. I'm gonna be wearing the same shirt like next week Thursday. I just feel, uh, or I think next next week. Next next week. Is it next next week. Not next week. It's because it lines <laughs> up with your like laundry schedule. Yeah, right? yeah, like, yeah. I just I'm rotation. just thinking that I'm gonna do laundry on a Wednesday and I'm gonna wear the same shirt. On yeah, one of the next podcasts. <laughs> so <laughs> I know that sounds weird now, but you guys will get it on the 25th. So. What's up, everyone? Here on Thursday Live Lesson, what we do here is we answer any and all of your questions uh, via the email, via the live chat, via UU+. Any way that we can get them, we'll try to answer them for you. We'll try to collectively put our brains together and come up with the best answer as we can. So Aaron is going to be you know, helping me out. He's going to be on the live chat as well. So if you guys you know, go on the live chat, Aaron Nakamura and Kahai is actually going to be on the chat as well. But Kahai is going to be reading off the questions. We're going to contemplate them. We're going to talk about them and try to give the best answer. So Kahai, hit me with the first question. Um, it's from George. George Jorge. Le <laughs> it's a George. Uh, different George. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. I don't know. Uh, so he, he said... Uh, Hi guys, is there any technique I can use as a low G player to still get ghost notes when playing chord solos to fatten up the song? Thanks. Or he said George. Okay. okay. Um, you know, there there is because like you can use you know you can use ghost notes um regardless if you have a high G or not. You can use a can I see your low G but so here's a low G ukulele right here. Um you know, if I were to do, you know, ghost notes, say for example, if I'm doing playing a uh, "Wonderful Tonight" by uh, Eric Clapton, D minor, here's my thumb that's about to do the, uh, the ghost notes. Watch carefully. slow for those people who didn't catch it. Can kind of you know use the low G. You can use any note. I'm gonna be let's use the C string. So here we go. That one was less subtle because <laughs> I was trying to put it in more places. But if you just keep it, yeah, I'd like just. But you can use any string, any note that you want as your ghost note because all it is is really you're trying to um, you know trying to put a note there that you know and trying to make it sound like it's not there, but it's there to just kind of take up space. So if I were to do something like down, up, chunk, down, that first down is kind of a long you know a long down strum. So in order to make that note a little bit longer and to put something in there, I can follow that up with a G. So instead of just going G, up, chunk, up, down, it goes G. So I added that thumb with the low G right before I did the up, chunk. So down, G, up, chunk, up, down. Down, G, up, chunk, up, down. Of course, it's, you know, it's a lot, not a lot, but a little bit more movement than, you know, than the normal strumming pattern but with you know with that you can actually use it as any you know um uh as whatever ghost note that you need it for okay but as far as um you know like picking wise you can use the low g as well so if you're doing um uh chord melodies like you're saying you can still use that so if i'm doing aloha oi Nah, nah, nah. 
Uh, yeah, I forgot like the ending that. or something like that. But <laughs> as you notice, I was still using the low G and it was still fine. Yeah. Oh, I'm in C. I was like, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> But yeah, I I think with the um with Loji you just gotta be extra ghosty with yeah, it. Extra ghosty. Yeah. <laughs> it, it will stick on like a sore thumb if you don't. Yeah, so. just don't play it hard. I mean ghost notes aren't you you aren't supposed to play the note hard anyway, but yeah. Ghosts especially don't like to be noticed. <laughs> yeah. It's but I think if you have a wound low G even more so, you have to really hit it super light or else it's gonna come out. Yeah. The it's supposed to be like because it's supposed to be felt but not heard necessarily, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, yeah, just yeah kind that... of fill up the space, but um, it's not like a melody line. It's not anything. Yeah, it's so, just it's filler. Really, is what it is. So what I'm doing is I'm not like I'm not thinking about it and just hitting you know hitting the G because if I'm thinking about what note I'm hitting with the G, that's when it gets a little bit complicated because I'm playing chords or even in chord melody. Because you're playing chords, you can pretty much hit the G anytime, or the C anytime, or the E anytime, or the A anytime, and it'll be the correct notes as long as you're playing the right chord. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I think just uh, uh, practice practice yeah, your practice. volume and when when you play a normal ghost uh, ghost notes, mm -hmm. anyways, uh, you use your like you use the pad of your thumb, right? Mm -hmm. Like you don't use your nail, so that's definitely like something to you, you sh should be doing anyways, but. If you're using your nail, like, mm -hmm. try not to. Like, try to use your pad yeah, and try yeah. to soften it up as much as you can. Well, I mean, with, with anything, as unless you're, like, picking, you're doing picking, then I would kind of use the, the pad of my thumb anyway. Like, when I strum, you know, when, when I do those things, um, I'm using the regular pad of my thumb. Unless I want, you know, like, I want to have those notes heard, like, in a picking, then I'll use the, you know, then I'll use the nail. I think uh, another problem people have with ghost notes or they ask us is like, you said I can add ghost notes and I can add strumming and stuff, yeah. but where do I add it? And for that, you just yeah. like, you need to learn, you learn the song first, yeah. right? Like you learn the strumming of the song first and just learn like down up, down up, down up, down up, mm -hmm. or learn, you know, learn to get the pulse. Mm -hmm. And ghost notes work pretty well on like mm -hmm. down strums yeah. or like following kind of that pa same pattern. So. Yeah, just like with you know well, using a little oi again as an example, instead of going up. So because those you know those notes aloha oi are you know like are kind of slow and um, and there's few notes you know in 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 between of that, you can uh, you can pretty much strum that. And still get those you know those uh, melody line notes and strum chords at the same time so on that down strum when Kahai was saying that you know it's easy to kind of get the chords on the down strum so get that down strum and then you can add like little embellishments in between or ghost notes so I just went as simple as to just like kind of tap on the G string like this You know, not they're not supposed to stand out or do anything um, other than to fill up some empty space. Because if I just went while it's effective, you know, it has the the chords with the you know with the notes and with the melody notes. It's you know there's parts in between where like you're just kind of gasping for air or gasping for some kind of you know like uh, where's the note? Uh, where's the note? You know, there's a lot of that anticipation, but if you uh, if you give them some ghost notes, it lets the audience kind of brace themselves when that note is coming in, instead of just the note will come in whenever the player feels like the note's going to be coming in. It, yeah, it gives it kind of like helps consistency. helps you feel the beat, mm -hmm. like where the beat is um, yeah. underneath mm -hmm. everything. So you can you don't even have to do it like that. You can you know you can be a little bit less subtle. You know, 
you can do like actual like notes and stuff if you want to do that. <laughs> I love that song, and I suck that I didn't remember the ending the <laughs> first time. I, oh man, it's been a, it's been a while. Sorry, sorry, Kahia. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, yeah, next next question. Uh, that was like the only pre question we had for okay. that week. So okay, so you know, um, I have gotten quite a lot of questions about like chord melodies and stuff, and kind of how you get started with that. So we did, you know, create a um a seminar, you know, based on chord melodies. It's called deconstructing chord melodies, and um the song that we did for uh, songs made easy last week, happy birthday, was done on uh, you know on as well not on but as a chord melody songs so if you guys want to learn how to do chord melodies please check out deconstructing chord melodies over on uu plus and you can learn how to play the melody how to highlight that melody and how to come up with um you know with the with the back of chords so that you have the chords and the melody line and it's nice and um you know it's it groups groove is pretty the, important yeah the way we've been mm-hmm. teaching uh solos recently right is yeah. where you play the chords behind the the, the melody mm-hmm. and stuff so mm-hmm. people and the, the idea is that people learn that first mm-hmm. and then they, they fill in with the melody line. Yeah. And I think like that's kind of one of the things that we've seen a lot of people kind of skip mm-hmm. is like they go like, oh, but I just I, I want to learn like the fancy way mm-hmm. first. Right. I want to learn how you when you do the play along, I want to play that like that way. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you it, it's yeah, yeah. if you do that, you're kind of like missing steps like. You really do need to see where down down strums are mm. gonna go, where you know where the pulse of the beat is supposed to be, yeah. and what the the feel of the song is supposed to be. So like you, and then when when you learn that, mm. then it's like uh, your thumb is like already there. So it's like so easy mm. to just be like, oh yeah, like why don't I just pluck this G string mm. or why why don't I just do this? It's and it is just like. Mm. I, don't, I feel like it, it's more natural to learn it that way than yeah. trying to force it from the beginning. And and I tell people to kind of look at, look at and listen to like a lot of good examples, like um, not just the stuff that we do on the U Plus solos. I guess you know you could watch the uh, the play along and kind of get an idea of how those things sound. But if you guys want to listen to like masters, you know, like doing uh, doing that kind of chord melody thing, um, one of the best ones that I've seen that does that kind of like. Just simple notes with simple chords and so nothing too fancy. So not nothing like uh, nothing like George, uh, not, or Benny, you know, like nothing like Uncle Benny or anything mm-hmm. like that. But uh, Herbal to Junior, actually, he's he's like the man when it comes to like simple melodies and chords behind them and stuff. He's actually really, really, really good. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys heard any of his like any of his tunes, mm-hmm. but um, you know, his version of Europa, beautiful. Like it's in uh, I believe it's in D minor. And it's um no no not E minor maybe A minor I think it's an A minor but really like one of the best versions of you know of Europa on a solo ukulele that I've ever heard. So if uh, for those people that that like you know that is like oh I want to learn Europa and stuff like maybe one of these days I'll do like a like a U plus solo on like on that version because I love 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 that version. The version that we have over in ukulele on the grounds in D minor and it's like the pure heart version that I you know that I learned uh, a while back. But I would like to see if I can get. I can get the green light to uh, <laughs> to do that A minor version, and that's someone that like. Um, so whenever you hear say Britney Piva play that, that's actually uh, Herbal the Junior's version of Europa. But he's he's really good. So listen to you know listen to him. Of course, Ota sound like the original. You know he does yeah. he does really great like romantic style kind of ukulele. You know and. He's put out like how many albums like you know, back <laughs> yeah. and he's he's got so yeah. much. So there's I like... think it's it's just a matter of being able to take mm. the song, the original song, yeah. and distill it down to something that is and ukulele can do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. very ukulele yeah. like it takes the essence of the mm. ukulele and makes that sing through the mm. ukulele. Yeah. So. He's it's it's so good. I mean like, you know, Daniel Ho's good at it too, you know, like just very simple melody. With like with the chords in the background, that guy won a you know a Grammy for a reason. It's because of that. He 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 
knows how to create simple melody that gets stuck. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then go listen, uh, go listen yourself to some uh, some pineapple mango. <laughs> like mm-hmm. that song is so simple in in terms of like notes and stuff, and like and uh, and what chords in the background. But you best believe you're gonna be like dun 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 like at the end, you know, you're coming it later on that day. Dun 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that's it like that's basically the whole song you know but like it's so good it's those things that like these masters know how to take something so simple but yet present it in a way that's like man that sounds really really awesome and really beautiful so those for me are some of my favorites you know um herbert jr right now is killing the game with you know with us and beautiful really you know like um nice melody line Okay. Uh his version of like Nada Soso is you know is is worldly popular. I think like everyone in Japan like plays that particular version of Nada Soso. Um Europa, um things like um I, I believe he did My Yellow Ginger Lay also. He did like uh uh Hello Hano Honolulu, that's another great one. Um of course G Minor Fleas, that's one of my favorite songs that uh Herbal to Jr. Uh, mm-hmm. compose and stuff. I play that in in the shows sometimes and stuff. But yeah, you just just a you know just a genius with uh with with melody lines and his attack is so clean <laughs> and then mm-hmm. like his ukulele tone is is so rich that I would highly suggest for Walter Jr. as far as chord melodies goes like that style of playing. Check him out. Uh, you know, of course, we got other guys like Kimo Hussey, like all these. But they they tend to do more like jazzy kind of stuff, which is still chord melody, you know. But if we're if we're talking just simple, pure, uh, you know, like melody, I mean, chord, and then groove, like those, you know, those are the guys yeah. that I would listen to. I think it's, it's kind of what what you were talking about, mm-hmm. where the ukulele arrangement has to be a compromise between you know mm-hmm. like everything that the song has yeah. in the original mm-hmm. and what your ukulele should and could do. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they I, those those yeah. artists are the best at striking that compromise. Yeah. yeah. You, like uh, we we talked before about like Uncle Brian, right? Yeah. And how like when he he plays with somebody else, he mm. knows the exact way mm. to add a little bit, but not overtake the song where it's like, oh, I only hear ukulele yeah. now. Mm-hmm. And I think those guys they know how to like they do yeah it's it's like a really good balancing act yeah. of yeah. doing chords and melody and then mm. making sure that both are heard mm. equally and or like mm. in the appropriate times yeah. right and i'm glad you said that because um uncle brian and her yeah. walter jr have a cd together it's called <laughs> brian, Nicola, like, brian Friends, tolentino yeah, yeah yeah brian tolentino and her walter jr has a you know has maybe two cds even like they mm. they do have a cd together mm-hmm. and it's actually really good and you know, that's they have g minor fleas and like they re-recorded it and had jake do a third verse <laughs> you know, so it's like Herb Ota, Brian Tolentino, Jake Shimabukuro on G minor plays on that on that album. It's awesome. So, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess there's, yeah. Two, oh, got, there's two. There's there's Ukulele Friends and then Ukulele Friends the sequel. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like something Uncle Brian. Yeah. <laughs> something, something, yeah. The sequel. <laughs> yeah. Something so. that they would. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like one of the you know some of the best um like. I would say strikers, you know, in the ukulele game because, like, the way that they, you know, the way that they attack the instrument is so calculated and so pure that I, like, drool over, like, their, you know, their their tone, their ukulele tone. But, you know, it, it's it's like those slow tunes. Like, I really want that, like, rich tone that, like, uh, that Orbota Jr. has. And so, I drool over it every time I listen to it. So that's like another mm-hmm. another thing too. Uh, you were talking about like how Aloha Oi mm-hmm. and some other or when you do ghost notes and when mm-hmm. you do strumming and stuff it's to fill in those voids but you should also not definitely not like just immediately go to mm-hmm. filling in every empty space right? Mm-hmm. Because like Europa right? Like having that open of the da 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 like having that like each note mm-hmm. get its full time yeah. and not have anything else is like oh you feel the impact yeah, of that yeah. so it's it kind of is like i mean it's we with the solos and everything we teach you like the basics and then we'd say you can do whatever you want mm-hmm. uh and yeah it really is up to you but definitely maybe consider that like consider when 
when it might be too much or when mm. you know you you can add a little bit more yeah. right yeah, yeah. yeah so and and those guys like they they, they do know. it perfectly they yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, they're, they're not gonna do it where it's so like good. oh that's <laughs> weird why would they put all of that there mm. so yeah. okay yeah uh is there any other questions um, no, our, oh yeah, that's right. You already said. This. Yeah. Any questions well, from the chat? Our chat is kind of like uh, they they came in and I, I, hopefully they're still there and they're watching, <laughs> but they're they're not like talking a lot. So uh, we'll see. It's, 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 yeah, the chat's Thank there, so you guys can ask us questions on the chat and stuff. But um, I remember uh, you know, way way back then when I was like really into like listening to CDs and like and figuring stuff out. Um, Herbal to Junior came up with um, you know, with 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 one of like I think it's called the Ukulele Dream. Like that album was uh you know was was really good. I I don't know if that was the first no, that wasn't the one with uh with G minor fleas, but I remember that C D being really well. Uh that might have been the one with like uh Still the One. Um da 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 That's I Herbal to Dream, I've been listening for it for a long time. He came to <laughs> Kauai one time and I just like, Oh my god. He's, he's right there on the Kukui Grove stage. Like, I could yeah. go and touch him and stuff. And it was, like, in high school. And, um, yeah, I, like, fanboyed out, I remember. And he's like, oh, right now. But he's, like, a very... Or is it Ukulele Journey? Journey. Yeah, yeah. Ukulele Journey. Um, yeah, he was... He's... Uh, if you guys... If anyone has ever met, like, Herb and stuff, he, Herb is very quiet, very, like like collected so it's kind of it's hard to read him as a fan you know as yeah. a fan like i kind of came up it's like oh yeah i'm like the biggest fan so i'm like you know in high school i'm very hyper and so i'm very excited about the ukulele and he's like that's cool he like, doesn't thank you, thank you he for, doesn't yeah. show yeah his, he doesn't his emotions on his face <laughs> <laughs> exactly and i was like i'm such a big fan you know like i uh if you could sign my cd i'd be great like oh so how this song how do you he's like it's I think bad. Thank you. Like, thing, you well, know, like, like I'll take the CD, and, like, and it's it's not it. like yeah. <laughs> it's not like he's he's doing that. To, no, he's not trying to be rude or anything. Yeah, that's it's, just how he yeah. learned. <laughs> in in so. comparison to like like people like Jake, right? Where if you were like, oh, I'm such so, such a big fan, he'd be yeah. like, oh, thank you, like <laughs> yeah, 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 giving you great. a hug and yeah, something. exactly. I'm so yeah, happy no, you yeah. enjoy no it. No one's. I don't know if he's giving people hugs or not saying that he's rude or whatever. Like he's not. He's also an awesome dude. But <laughs> yeah, he's not. He's not that guy. From what I've, you know, from what I've learned, anyway, he's not that guy. So, uh, you know, every time I'd see him and stuff, like he was like, "Oh, Andre, how's it going, man? How's uh, how's how's you cool on the ground? How are you? Like that's <laughs> it's kind of like our conversations, you know. It's like hey. things are good, man. Things are good. Uh, things are good, Herb. And that's, yeah. it. Like, and that's it. I don't know if I've had like an actual full conversation <laughs> with her Walter, like other but, than through ukulele. Other than through ukulele, yeah. exactly. You know, like we've yeah. uh, it's we we've had like lunch together and stuff, but I don't know if we've actually engaged in like a full <laughs> conversation where we like got into things. But no, it's just like simple hi bye, how's that's how's how, life, how's whatever. That's and how that's he it. expresses himself is yeah, through, through ukulele. Uke. Yeah, through you. Yeah, but cool guy, you know, cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> Have you you met her, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, just at Nam, right? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah when we were in. Yeah. <laughs> what's your What's your experience with her, Walter Junior? Oh, I, I don't know. Not I yeah. haven't really had too many yeah. interactions with him. Did you try to be like, "Hey, I'm Aaron. Like, I heard so you we play G minor fleas." No, because I'm stuff. also the same. Where like you know, <laughs> oh, you don't. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> unless somebody is like really gonna interact yeah, 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 with yeah. me, yeah. then I don't go out of my way. Yeah. So you don't go give it out hugs with or people. Anything. I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm 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 willing to give hugs. Yeah, it's yeah. just that like I I'm, oh. I don't go up unless, to people yeah. and be like yeah. I'm gonna get a message from Herb now. I was like, "What? I like hugs, Eldrin. Why would you say that?" (laughs) I'm a hug monster. (laughs) (laughs) I think. Well, like, I I, when we used to go to Nam, I I know like the the only person who I like actively seek out and like hug was like Mim. Yeah. Okay. Because like I like Mim, right? Like she she is like that person who will be like. Oh my gosh! And she'll run up to you and hug you yeah, first if yeah, you don't yeah. hug her. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll do she'll that. She'll yell at you from across the room. Like, but hey. I'm, I'm not gonna go up to like, yeah, whatever, Casey Kamaka. <laughs> be like, hey, Casey, oh man, it's great hey, to see you again. Casey, where, where's my? <laughs> bring, bring it in. in. Bring where's, it in, Casey. Bring hug? it in, <laughs> yeah. Joe. Yeah. So. You know, you don't, you don't go around doing that. Yeah. Why not, man? 
I don't know. People want to. I'm just a grouchy old man. I'm just a grouchy old man. Do you know when yeah. Herb Ota Jr. switched to Kamaka? Because because I put the yeah, yeah. the links to yeah. Ukulele Friends and Ukulele Friends the sequel. It, and the in the first one he's playing a koaloha. Oh, the second one. And the second one he's playing. Um, Kamaka. it was shortly after Ukulele Friends the first one came out. Oh okay. Yeah. yeah. So, it's because Brian Brian yeah. made it <laughs> got him to to guess, switch yeah. or something. <laughs> I remember um, Uncle Brian yeah. used to tell me because uh, he got he got invited to, to collaborate with um you know with uh with Herb Walter on that first that first G minor phase that take, first take of G minor phase mm-hmm. and um with with that he was telling me that like oh Herb just told me to like to meet him at like. Pilani Park and like always oh, go like work this out. I think I got this. I think I got G minor, C minor, D like D seven. Let's, let's make something with G minor, C minor, and D seven. Uh-huh. And like they said that they wrote that song like an afternoon, like oh, wow. Pilani, and then like they go like, oh, okay, I'm gonna do this, and like and oh, uh, Herb's like okay, I'm gonna do this then. Like okay, cool, let's record it, and then yeah. we recorded it, and it was all good. I'm like wow, it's an awesome story because I still play that song like yeah. to this day. Well, so, I mean, when you yeah. have like mm-hmm. high level players like that, it's yeah. kind of and and they're able to riff off of each mm-hmm, other. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's it's pretty easy to get like really good ideas mm-hmm. pretty quickly. That's like my favorite part. That's Brian Tolentino right there. But <laughs> Uh, I'm like it's just a huge fanboy, just, just right. like everyone else. Actually, you know yeah. what I mean? Like I'm just a huge fanboy of ukulele. Like I love uke. Yeah, yeah, but I, I think we we all are right. But yeah. then we actually do get to hang out with these people yeah, sometimes. Yeah, it's, and... it's awesome. I mean, you know, I Brian, Uncle Brian's like, you know, whenever you're down like on you know on Oahu, we we meet up at this place like every whatever for lunch, and this is like him, Uncle Benny. Like a Dr. Yasui, like yeah. all these guys, like yeah, just come hang out with us. I'm like, that's gonna be like the most like I'm I'm gonna be super anxious, <laughs> you know, like about that uh about that lunch. I probably won't eat like for you know the entire time. Actually, like what to say, what to, you know, like I'm like I don't I don't want to like chime in. I just want to watch and listen to you guys talk because I might say something stupid. And Dr. Yasui's like, no, sit down, and shut your mouth, go <laughs> go back to the he's kids' like, not table. Not like that at all, man. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, this, who brought this kid here? Who brought this kid to the table? He doesn't know anything. We all have doctorates in music here. <laughs> Sorry, I uh, went to community college. <laughs> but nah, they're they're nice people. I'm just they're I'm, I'm super cool. nice. Cool. Yeah, very. Like um, that time when we were cruising in um uh, in Thailand, uh, Thailand with Uncle Benny, he's just like, oh, just hit me up, whatever. If you want to learn something, yeah. just ask. Mm-hmm. Like, Wait. Okay. When when we talked to him and Nam, yeah, and we're like, oh yeah, we would love to like do something. Mm-hmm. He was like, oh yeah, here's my number, and he yeah, he was like getting like, excited. I'm busy we're like, oh, this, you know, this oh. time, this time, but hit me up on this day, blah 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 blah. We yeah. still gotta have him in. We we yeah. we've been talking about for years, but we still gotta have him in. Do stuff. He's super willing and then ready to you know ready to do it. But explaining his like ideas yeah, behind I mean, chords, jazz. right? Yeah, is like oh that that would be cool. Pretty cool. Okay. okay, uh any We do have some stuff. chats okay, cool. from chat questions. questions. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh so an easy one is uh is that a Connie Lea E Silk ukulele? Oh yes it is. This is a Connie Lea E Silk ukulele. So silk. Um K it's actually K P W P T. I think well it's it's called it's called that, but then they changed the name to E Silk after afterwards, after this is that this made. So So what is the silk uh referring to? Yeah, fun fact. So silk is actually what you know what Joe uh Joe Susan and I came up with when we were, you know, like when we were thinking about like the finishes and stuff when we were making the original Mary Jane, which is my original um custom Kanye ukulele. Um I liked what he did, you know, to the neck because with the neck, I told him I don't like it being too, uh, you know, having too heavy of a, like a gloss or anything. But he's like, okay, well, we do UV, so the gloss won't be that, you know, I won't be that thick anyway. I was like, okay, cool, but I just don't like that feel of, you know, like of, of gloss, like on my, uh, you know, on, on my finger, especially on the on the neck, because I want the neck to move, you know. So he's like, okay, I'll see what I can do. So he uh he did you know he did a thing he explained to me how about like tea tree oil and like uh, four or five or whatever and just like you know like just uh, kind of sand it down a little bit to like 
to make it even you know even less than um than what what they had so it's like the middle ground between um you know between the uv finish and between satin finish so satin was what they had you know with the uh, with the other one which is like barely any finish very like dry feeling and stuff so mm-hmm. i was like okay well it's not necessarily satin uh, well, let's call it silk you know because it's cause satin, it's smooth it's yeah, smooth yeah. It's, you know so we called it silk and uh and then we're just like why don't we just put the thing that we do in the next on the entire ukulele well, and then, like why don't we just do it for the whole thing that that one specifically we mm-hmm. asked for that because mm-hmm. with the, your other ukulele it has a gloss yeah. finish yeah. And when we use the cameras, the lights get reflected mm-hmm. off the glass mm-hmm. finish. So Yeah, so So this one that we that you're using right now. Yeah. Because we were, you know, we were using my custom ukuleles back then and I, I asked Joe, I was like, okay, well, the custom ukulele, while it's nice, while it sounds awesome and stuff, we need something for teaching. We need something, you know, that has the dots because we didn't have the dots in and we need something that wasn't so reflective because of the cameras, you know. Um, you know, for ukulele underground, I, think, I need a teaching ukulele is what we called it. Yeah. And I think you, you asked him, like, mm. can you not put any finish on it? And then he was like, oh, let me just put this finish yeah, on yeah. it at so least. Put, yeah. like, let me just put it. something <laughs> yeah. on it. So they weren't even making silk as a, you know, as a, no, like a normal thing yet. So this is I, one of the first ones they, that, they, uh, that they did the whole silk, you know, finish with. Um, so then, you know, I asked for just like a regular... Uh, ebony uh, fingerboard with you know with the dots so that you know, whenever I'm explaining things people can kind of see the dots and use those as a reference whenever I'm teaching um, so this was you know my teaching ukulele and I wanted just a really basic uke so that when people watch you know like the videos and stuff they're not like oh well it's probably his ukulele that's making him sound good they're like that's making him do all these things with his hands <laughs> you know it's because the uke's nice that's why he can yeah. bend so high yeah. or whatever you know it's because well, the it, it nice. still is a very nice, nice yeah, it is a nice uke <laughs> you know that's, that's why he can play the e chords so easily is because yeah. his uke's nice but it's like we wanted to take away that you know like that whole um you, you know uh intimidation of like think, my my custom ukulele is and i think like we also didn't want like when me and aaron are shooting videos <laughs> it's like oh you can see our faces in the reflection of <laughs> yeah. the ukulele it's like yeah, yeah. so yeah. you know when when we asked for that that's that's kind of what we did but that's basically what silk is is in the middle of satin and the uv finish so it's not necessarily satin it's more smooth like silk yeah, yeah. so that's like a like a regular option that they have now yes Yes. I think, uh, like the full ukulele, right? Yeah. Like you don't. I think before you could do it, but you'd have to go through their custom mm-hmm. shop and order yeah. it. Back then, it was like, um, because if you look at my very first Mary Jane video where I kind of revealed that, like, oh, here's my brand new custom ukulele from Kanilea. I talked about that, like, oh, this neck feels so good or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like it's like the best feeling, you know, neck or whatever that I've you know that I've felt on on an ukulele, and like that's kind of what we came up with you know with uh, when, when joe and i first started kind of collaborating and in, into uh, creating you know what what would be the aldrin guerrero model and yeah so we're still collaborating you know today and we're still trying to come up with some cool stuff that should be out soon i guess i don't know we're doing something new for 2019 with Kanilea. yep we'll see <laughs> we'll see <laughs> i don't want to like hype people up like, <laughs> watch out it's coming and it doesn't come yeah. like we the year next year <laughs> we learn we learn from way. our other projects right like yeah. solo secrets it's like it's coming like it's coming and then it's like Soon. six months later Soon-ish. it's like i swear i'm working on it i'm working yeah. really hard on it but yeah, it just so takes I, a long yeah time. i don't want to like build people up anymore yeah. but yeah hopefully next year okay uh walter anderson mm-hmm. said what would you do technique wise to make a simple song sound more interesting um just add i mean adding techniques like you you know it's it's in the question like add techniques to you know to kind of do a simple song so what i mean by that is uh you know let's take it back to mary had a little lamb if you have mary had a little lamb and even then i'm like making it fancy by using some like vibrato and stuff you know but techniques uh you know you can you can do that you can do that very same line but maybe adding some like slides or some hammer on some pull off so you know you can uh, you can definitely make something more fancy by adding fancy in there by by just adding um you know like basic 
technique, really. You know, you're you're adding. Um, if I always tell people, think of you know, it, like singing. Like if you're a singer, you're kind of doing you know, you're doing your notes. You can either sing it like you can sing things like this, or you can slur some words and make some words more articulated. You know, like there's w different ways of speaking. So that's just what you know. That's what I do. Instead, you know, instead of going. I was like, okay, well, I'm going down. Maybe I can do pull-offs. And then I'm going to go back up. Maybe do hammer-ons. I'm going to go up again. Maybe slide it that time. So I have... It already sounds fancier than uh, the one I just had. But uh, other things that I can, you know, that I can add, you know, I can add like bends and stuff that will make it extra fancy. I could add maybe some, you know, some nice voicings on the chords. Maybe I can even just add a simple harmony that will make it fancy. So instead of, I can add for harmony. That's already making it fancy. So that's another thing that, you know, that you can add. You can maybe add the full chord if you're, you know, if you're into that. You can, you know, you can do the full chord there to make it, make it fancy once again. That's just a like chord melody. <laughs> do that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's a, there's a lot of different ways that you can make something sound fancier. I think uh, we, and we talk about all those mm -hmm. things in... Uh, 101. Or uh, 102, yeah. I think, 102. is more yeah. where we... Especially like harmonies and mm -hmm. slides and picking mm -hmm. and stuff. So, uh, and then, um, so if they, they kind of just said a uh, simple song, mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, what if it's like a strumming song? Like okay. for strumming, what would you? Add? Um, I would maybe change up the, uh, you know, like the, the rhythm of the strum and stuff. So if, uh, if I'm doing just a strumming song without picking in it, for example, if I'm doing um, like Sunday morning, so. some rolls maybe add like some syncopation so it's you know I'm not doing anything fancy I'm just adding some syncopation in there like and, and kind of playing around with the rhythm the rhythm is just a simple Excuse me, with the syncopation, the rolls, and the chunks. You know, you can make things kind of fancier just by adding some simple like embellishments. And all I'm doing is I'm playing around with the syncopation. I'm adding rolls. I'm adding chunks. Just some n nothing too you know too advanced. Although it sounds like oh man, he's doing something super fancy, but it's not really. It's just you chunks, rolls, and you can do that like one at a time. Mm -hmm. It's not like mm -hmm. you have to go straight in for mm -hmm. okay. Adding I'm gonna everything, add yeah. both the roll and the chunk, and I'm gonna do mm -hmm. so. Like I think like the starting level right is like that's why we tell people just do downs, mm -hmm. just do down up, down up, down up. And for like a song like that, it would be like just do down up, down up, down up, down up, mm -hmm. and, and then add like the mutes. Or you just go like down, down up, up, down up. Yep. You go to that strum, mm -hmm. and then from there, you can go like down, chunk up, up, down up. Right? It all builds. Like it, it's. So, the um. It's actually you know a good segue because next weekend we're going to uh, Uktoberfest over in San Francisco, and uh, one of my workshops 
is um is going to be an advanced you know advanced techniques workshop and um last year i taught advanced techniques as in like you know bends and and pull-offs and hammer-ons and stuff but this time i'm actually going to be doing more right hand strumming advanced techniques and we're going to be learning um dancing in the moonlight because in dancing in the moonlight we don't just go we do Although it sounds really like you know really basic, really simple, there's actually a lot of like a lot of rhythmic things and advanced things that are happening, you know, with uh, with the right hand and the left hand together with mutes and stuff. So you know we're doing muted rolls, we're doing like some syncopation in there, or like a we're doing rolls with the chunks, and it's it's gonna be good fun. So I'm gonna be kind of explaining that, and we'll go over the picking, which would be that. fun <laughs> it's not next weekend it's the weekend after the that. weekend after yeah. sorry the, the 27. 27th yeah 27 not not next but the next 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 <laughs> next, 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 next 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 week yeah next no. next next just okay. next, next, <laughs> next, next, weekend. next next weekend. Not next next twenty seventh. The twenty yeah, seventh. It's, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> it's we're gonna be there. It's great. Go get your tickets because I think there's still some tickets left. So get your tickets now over at Uktober SF Uktoberfest dot com. Yep. Yeah. That's right. SF. Is it San Francisco? SF Uktoberfest dot com. I think there's another question. Oh, uh, I um. Just uh, what? Uh, I think there's multiple YouTuber first. So, like, that's oh, why you do oh, SF. SF yeah. Oh, okay, see, that's see. why it's important. Yeah. SF um, YouTuber fest. I was going to say, I, I, people, like, I think when people see you do strumming like that, mm -hmm. like, your right hand techniques are, like, it is pretty intricate. Mm -hmm. But then they, they ask, like, oh, like, how did you even come up with that strumming in the first place? Like, yeah. how would you think of that? Mm -hmm. And it's... Like, drums. Yeah, listen to yeah. the drums. You, or you listen to the original song, mm -hmm. right? Or you listen mm -hmm. to what you want the song to sound like. Mm -hmm. So, like, uh, I, I know for one of our classes is, or one of our lessons, it's Stand By Me, right? Mm -hmm. And it really is that bass part. Like, yeah. you're recreating the... Because that's what people know. And, and same for, like, Dancing in the Moonlight. It might not... Like, it might not be something that, like, mm -hmm. if they just heard that, they would be like, yeah. oh, Dancing in the Moonlight. But it definitely is like it comes off as like oh you're playing you're trying to play dancing in the yeah. moonlight. Well, more. so here's you know here's a little bit of a, of a deeper look into that when we're doing something like uh, like stand by me. So the bass line is dun 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 da da dun dun like no ghost notes like that's just it's yeah. just the bass line. So what we do is that uh, we not only just take a listen to the bass line, but we take a look at what everything else is doing in the song. So with, with Stand By Me, there's like a hi-hat, you know, like um, a hi-hat step. So when you step on the hi-hat, it goes, and it has that makes that sound. So it goes, dun, 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 because there's, there's a, uh, a hi-hat that you're doing. So what we're doing is we're doing, you know, embellishments on the ukulele that will kind of imitate those things that we hear. So we have the rhythm pattern of bum, 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 so if we're just following the rhythm pattern of the bass alone, you know it's it's gonna be kind of boring. So bum bum boom dum bum bum ba da dum bum ba da bum ba da dum bum ba da dum bum ba da dum bum. But what about the things in the middle? What about that hi-hat thing that I'm talking about? That's when that rolls come in and, you know, the embellishments of... So... So those are like kind of, you know, embellishments from the drums since we're playing the uh you know the bass line there's a bass line and the drums is kind of going on you know there's like there's a there's kind of a rhythm pattern that's going on in that song so we want to be able to uh take all the elements that we hear with our ears and present them with our ukulele because the ukulele is such a high sounding instrument we don't have bass 
we don't have kind of any percussion that's, you know, thing to, to back us up. So that's how we do it all with the youth. Yeah. And I think that's like one of the most under uh, like or people don't really practice it is like mm -hmm. active listening to other instruments. Mm -hmm. Right. Like and that's definitely what you want to if you want to be a musician that like can kind of fill out an yeah. entire song. Yeah. Like you definitely want to hear the the original song mm -hmm. and hear all the different parts that are going on in it. And you know, and when we play and stuff, like we just played last night and um, you know, I was talking to some of the people in the audience and just like it's you know, it's kinda of crazy like how you guys, you know, take these songs and stuff and, and reinterpret them with like with a nukula and the guitar, but then like do it in this way where it sounds kind of full. And then that's kind of how I would explain things and how it sounds full, quote unquote. Is because you know we're trying to um, not just play one instrument, but play trying to cover for multiple instruments in an you know in an arrangement. I'm trying to be the uh, you know like the, the drummer and trying to be the uh, you know like the lead um, the lead in the instrumentalist or you know at the same time. Yeah. Like Aaron is trying to be the bass player and a guitar player at the same time. You know there's uh, there are multiple things that we're doing with our instruments to to make it sound the way. Because because like if you're playing with a full band, mm. you would actually like probably. Play less, back, yeah. yeah. Play less. Like you feel less. like, oh, I don't need to play all no, this rhythmic it, patterns and. And all it is stuff. super weird. Whenever I'm playing with, you know, with with uh, with drums and stuff, I always have to kind of tell myself to hold back a little bit. So it's almost like I f I feel I play better with less people mm. because I get to do all the cool like little embellishments and people will see that and I'm like, oh, that sounds great. But when I have drums and I'm doing all this, people won't hear it anyway. So it just looks like me. He's just, being doing crazy things in the club, but no one really hears it. So, well, you you, you want <laughs> if you're playing with other people, you want to fit like whatever position mm -hmm. you're kind of playing, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. of course, so, of course, of course. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, well, Dwayne said, "Hey, Aldrin, I've been working <laughs> on my soloing." Hey, Dwayne. <laughs> and I'm going to a Utoberfest. Okay. Uh, if you're not busy, could we jam for a song or two? Yeah, no problem. Just uh, take me on the side and somebody like, "Hey, you said we would jam." I think. And then I would be like, okay, you said yeah. one or two songs. So, <laughs> and then it's I'm gonna... Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Oh, Dwayne The Rock. What's up, Dwayne? Of course, yeah. me and you can jam a few songs. Dwayne. I like, I didn't see that the rest of his username. <laughs> oh, yeah, Dwayne like, The I Rock. I only saw Dwayne Johnson. So. I, I thought it was. The My actually... Via. thought you were Rocky My Via. Yeah. <laughs> Deep pull, guys. This 90s wrestling. <laughs> yeah, it's. He left the nation of domination and just became the rock. Like what? Mm -hmm. Calling people jabronis. And stuff. I like <laughs> I like when you start talking about wrestling. <laughs> because usually if you talk about like uh, uh video games or other stuff, I'm like, yeah, I can talk about this. I can throw out <laughs> some deep cuts too. We were, we we're talking about Spider Man, right? Yeah. And we we're I was throwing out some stuff. But then w once you talk about wrestling, I'm just like, like neither you or yep. Aaron can like can chime in, and it's just me like, man, I wish Mike were here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mike, Mike was yeah, here. Mike, that's, <laughs> that's it. Sorry. You know, that just leaves me like putting my hands up, like man, why is Mike not always here? He should. He's like the fourth Beatle <laughs> of a. Uh, yeah. We, Mike we could do, do a, a podcast about wrestling if he wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Just Mike. <laughs> By himself. Oh, man. I think, I think Mike could do like a simultaneous podcast about music wrestling and music theory. <laughs> and I'll listen to that. I'll listen to Mike. Like, oh, man. Magic Mike. We need to get him. We haven't had him for this month, have we? We need to get him in. Uh, I don't know. We well, probably won't then. He, yeah, I, I think... Maybe. Gone. Yeah, and I think mm -hmm. we also like the last time we had him in, we had him in for like a couple weeks, right? I think because mm -hmm. it Aaron wasn't here too, so. Uh, yeah. But we we will get him back in. Yes, yes, we. You will. guys should just do the podcast. You and Mike, you and Mike, <laughs> you and Mike. Kahai and Mike show <laughs> when when but, while we're gone. <laughs> well, we're not here next week, right? No. Nope. Okay. You guys are leaving that day, yeah, I think. No. Yeah. Oh, Thursday. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I'm, so leaving like i think at 10 in the morning or something yeah so unfortunately next week there's not going to be a uh a thursday live lesson there's not going to be a songs made easy and there's also not going to be a, a friday live jam for two week. weeks two weeks yeah two weeks but i think the week after that on the 25th we have a very special podcast <laughs> <laughs> so we we will fly back just just to do that one i'll be wearing the same shirt <laughs> and uh, and then we'll fly back out to San Francisco and then uh, I think do the, do the show. Yeah. No, no, we're, we're doing it 
from San Francisco, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, we brought but, the high with us. But it looks exactly like here. <laughs> like we recreated the <laughs> we, set we just, one for one mm-hmm. in San Francisco. Ah, yeah, that, that's it. That's right. Because it's just a white set, right? Like a white background. That's what yeah. We, yeah, we're not what we did. We're about to do. So we're is going it? to do. <laughs> so what, do you, what do you mean, Kai? We is, did. Is we didn't it, do it yet. Is it a white background or is it is it a green background oh, that just what? looks that white? That we just turned white. That's why I don't wear green shirts anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I like I like whenever people come here and they're like, "Oh, it is just a white background." <laughs> <laughs> I like when yeah. people come here. It's like this. Where's the rest of it? Where's the rest of Ukulele <laughs> Underground? Like, this is this is Ukulele Underground. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what people think, right? Like, yeah. They, they're, what, what do you mean? It's just the four of you. <laughs> It's like, well, it's not just the four of us. It's five of us. <laughs> yeah, one's not here. Yeah, yeah. one's working remotely. So <laughs> but don't worry about it. It's all good. It's all good. We put out some. We put out some quality content, Kai, and that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, yeah, it's what we put out. <laughs> are we gonna? Um, are we gonna announce the winner for the contest? Yes, we should. We should. Uh, we should definitely do that. So, do you have the, the names of the people and stuff? I have the names. Uh, I didn't. I, I'm sorry. I forgot to set it up it's so okay. like it's they okay. can see the names and everything. Uh, okay. But like, give me a sec to uh, put the Together. list. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we'll, we'll let's just. Kahai is gonna go do that, and uh, me and me and Aaron will will talk ukulele. So Aaron, when you were uh, starting up your ukulele, what kind of strings did you have on there? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? What kind of strings did <laughs> you have on your? You used to be an ukulele player, you said, right? Like you used to play ukulele for your band. We talked about it here on Thursday live lesson. And so, what kind of strings did you have when you're you? And what kind of uke did you have? Uh, I don't know. What, what kind of ukulele? <laughs> CD. I, you? Ukulele yeah. was like super long. Like I didn't play ukulele for the band. Oh, you played guitar. Yeah, I was playing mm. guitar, but oh, you had an applause we... guitar. Oh, you didn't have. You even have an ovation guitar. You had an applause guitar, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no I had an ovation guitar. Oh, okay. Yeah, but it was um. But for when we first started learning, mm-hmm. it was just that that like my auntie's kamaka that I used, nice. and it was the strings that came with it <laughs> the kamaka from or... the nineteen seventies. Oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. Um, because uh, I, I say this because I went to uh, Kauai Music and Sounds, you know, this uh, this past week. Yeah. And uh, I was looking at the string selections, and I, was, and I was talking to Mike. I was like, "Man, there's a lot of string selections and stuff now." And he asked me, it's like, well, what did you use, you know, back in the day? And I told him Martin, you know, Martin strings and stuff. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. we, we still have those. But, like, not a lot of people buy those. I was like, what? Like, what do you mean? Like, you guys should, you know, push this a little bit more because these strings actually sound really good. And no, no one was, really uh, talks about it. It's like Martin unsung... was clear? Clear, yeah, yeah. Martin clears. And, um, you know, if if I didn't have the AG Cross EQ, if they didn't have the uh, the Diodarios and Severes, that would be my fourth choice, I think. Because, um... I think that the that the sound that comes out is nice and clear. It's made of fluorocarbon. It's got good material, and it's like the tension on it is is not bad. You know, like um, I definitely couldn't be banging it the way that I do now. But I think for just like a regular soprano ukulele or a concert ukulele, I would go with those Martin strings, and that's why I asked because uh, there wasn't a lot of people that were using them back then. And there's not a lot of people using them now, and I think that more people should know about them because. Uh, it's it's widely available because Martin is such a big company that like those strings are going to be there. You know, if you go to say, um, you know, what's a what's a what's a big music like store? a guitar center, like a guitar, yeah. If you go to a guitar center and stuff, and you ask for like, um, you know, like AG Cross AQ strings or whatever string, they were like, they might not have it, but. Mm. Nine out of ten, I think stores are gonna have like Martin Ukulele strings. So if you don't if you don't have any access to any of the other ones, Martin's a great choice. <laughs> they really changed their packaging. Yeah, um, yeah, they did. And uh, this is not like hashtag ad. Like no one's paying me to say these things because yeah. I know it sounds like this is coming out of nowhere. And and I have an ukulele pack myself. You know, like uh, these uh, AG strings are you know are my own creation. But I'm just saying, if I didn't have them, if I didn't have the other ones, Martin, because um. I had that conversation with Mike over at the store and stuff. And um, so he was kind of surprised because he said that no one's ever mentioned, you know, Martin's being like being good or not. Like people who do pick them up are like guitarists that like will, will pick up Martin's strings because that's kind of what they trust, you know. Mm-hmm. So ukulele players don't really seek them out. But I I like them. I've liked them since I was in 10th grade in high school. And um, and Mike showed me an ukulele that was strung up with them. I'm like, they feel pretty much the same and they sound great. They sound better than... Say like GHS strings. So GHS strings are those that they use for like Kamaka and stuff. Um, you know, the, the plastic seems a little bit too uh, too dead and heavy for me. 
And that's kind of why I switched over to Martin back then because GHS just wasn't giving me the tone that I want or like that kind of... The black strings. Yeah, the yeah. black strings. It just sounded kind of dead. It was too warm. Well, not Maybe warm is not the word and stuff. It's it, just... GHS yeah. in general are pretty bright. Like, yeah. I know they're they, they have different types now. Oh, yeah, of so. course, of course. But yeah, like back, you know, back then. I haven't tried GHS since, honestly. So I don't know. They might be good. I know Craig and Sarah has like a set and stuff. I've mm-hmm. played their ukes with that set on. And it sounds good on their ukes, but I kind of need... You know, I like controlled. <laughs> I like uh, I I use GHS for uh-huh. like some of my guitars, mm-hmm. but it definitely is like something where it's like ah for this guitar, not for mm-hmm. this guitar, mm-hmm. or like, and I think if their guitar strings are to say anything, it's like ah, maybe not. It, I can see where you'd say like it's <laughs> it can be like a little dead or like it, it can be a, a stand too out. bright. Yeah, I don't. But it, it sounds good. I mean, to me, it sounds good um i used to you know i used to like like worth clears and stuff i don't know maybe i'm just a sucker for like clear strings but those were okay but i feel like they were a bit thin so they kind of sound like worth clears but a little bit thicker when i i know like a common thing that people ask you is like Mm -hmm. they go why does my strings have a squeaky sound Mm-hmm. And that comes a lot from that, um, like the now gut or like the yeah, Diodario. Yeah, it's kind of dry, so it's yeah. like it'll feel dry. So when you, uh, you know, when you move your fingers, your, you know, the oil in your fingers and the sweat and stuff is gonna go on it. It's gonna, it's gonna squeak because the, the string itself is dry, whereas your fingers are moist. And that's that, like that Diodario, the white mm-hmm. strings where it, like, I, I know, like when I worked at the ukulele, when I worked at a ukulele shop, <laughs> like. There's like powder on the Diodario, or not Diodario, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Aquila. Aquila, Aquila strings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like we would get like whole, like big packs of them, mm-hmm. and it would just be kind of like dusty, you know? Mm-hmm. And But that's like the powder that they put on top. Yeah, so it, there definitely or is something. It might just come from the strings. Oh, yeah. yeah and the factory yeah. too, or something. Yeah, like yeah, it, yeah. There is, is it definitely is dusty something. There. <laughs> yeah. And but, the, I think the clear strings don't. Mm-hmm really have that usually right no i mean the ag aq strings are kind of you know are uh, are the clear strings and stuff and they don't have any kind of residue like on them yeah they, they feel great i mean these are still my choice of yes. strings and stuff and those are just nylon right yeah 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 i, I don't think i've seen the packaging for martin mm. is that, that white since one? we've had it no no they went really yeah, islandy <laughs> Oh yeah, that is a white one. Oh, it's, I guess it's greenish, like. Oh, I don't know. I mean, don't they? Well, yeah. That looks super is it, different. Now. It's like really islandy. They mm-hmm. went with like hibiscus yeah. and like oh, yeah. palm, back, palm trees and stuff. Back then, it was like kind of that like square packaging, you know, like that carton kind of packaging. Yeah, yeah I remember. Yeah, that's that's oh, the one man. that I kind of remember, yeah. like the the classic. It kind of mm-hmm. sort of re- resembles the the Martin guitar string yeah, yeah, kind of yeah. set. Yeah, something that I've liked they, that kind of went different. So, something that i like that string um string makers or string packagers whatever do now is that they'll vacuum seal their packs <laughs> yeah. because i used to buy strings yeah. and if you buy like a wound string pack for mm-hmm. ukulele here mm-hmm. you can get a rusty wound it's low true. tree string and it's like it'll oxidize what the heck <laughs> yeah. like, oh man yeah. i just like this is salt brand air. new yeah. right yeah. it's like oh man yeah that's like i mean that's i guess it's more for guitar strings right uh, yeah. But would so, that would that like do it for the aluminum wound too? You think? Yeah, for ukulele, uh, the the aluminum so wound. They, Usually they come in like these kind of paper packages. Mm-hmm. So yeah, the air will get <laughs> so sometimes you'll like look at the paper and you can kind of see rust. the rust <laughs> yeah. on the paper Gross. already. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Like, you know, depends how old it is. Yeah. 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 So yeah. so it could uh, it could be like you know brand new in mm-hmm. the store, <laughs> but it was just sitting on the shelf for two months mm-hmm. and like yeah. you know. I, okay, how did you uh, get yeah. the list? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's uh, let's let's do this. Yeah. Enough singing praises about like Martin and stuff. It's just like a random conversation that I had with Mike. It's like, why don't people talk about this more? <laughs> like I'll PhD about strings. <laughs> <laughs> PhD strings are great. Love PhD strings. They, yeah, that's friend of the I, show. That's what friend I use show. for my low that's G. <laughs> my, it's an unwound low G. Yeah, we were just talking about um, uh, um, Daniel. Daniel Ho. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Daniel Ho and Jason Arimoto. Yeah, those are their friends of the show. Yep. Friends of the show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Both, but not sponsors. So. Yeah, but yeah. So no, no, no ad. There's not We're an ad. Not. <laughs> these things, okay. We just like. Yeah. Uh, I I spun the wheel. So okay. Oh, you, you you pre-spun it. 
Well, when you said like uh like so I. I oh, okay. Well, but, so we have a winner already. Yeah. Oh, I wanted the surprise. I wanted to do this. Can I still do the thing? Drum roll. Yeah. Yeah. Go okay, ahead. Okay, okay. Yeah. And our winner is. Just. Anne. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like uh, usually What's we it? usually and we what? put her like we put their the first. Letter of their last name. What's the letter of their last? Name? What's the first letter uh, of their last name? <laughs> I don't, I don't know. Didn't put it. That's oh, why it's not on there. Yeah. Or like because uh, what is it called? Uh, this is our U plus members. Yeah, so mm. we we have oh, like. I see, see, see. It, 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 there's only one Anne, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, like if you if you're Anne and you entered in the contest, you won, and okay. we'll we'll let you know too. Yeah, yeah. Anne. Yeah, yay! What did Anne win? Anne won a. Olakaina CD, and she also won. A, I'm guessing it's a she. <laughs> I, I think so. Eat, sleep, music sessions from the K Town Heroes. You'll win these two CDs uh, alongside a button and sticker Aldi Club. So congratulations! This is the uh, this is kind of the exclusive prize for UU Plus members. This Eat, sleep, music session. This wasn't um, offered to the Alor Friday Land yeah. people. So that's just for you guys. Yo, uh, you'll sign it too, right? Like if sure. she wants yeah, it. Yeah, she wants it. You know, yeah. she wants to ruin the CD. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I'll sign it, I guess. Which one? This one or both? Uh, well, say? no, no. Uh, I oh don't yeah, know. yeah. Have well, her specify. Yeah, we'll we'll I'll contact her. We'll okay. find out. Yep. Yeah. All right. So, any last minute uh, business before we go? Uh, I think that's it. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, if not, if uh, if nothing else, we'll see you guys. Um, stick around after uh, after the show. We have songs made easy. We are going to be doing "Fallen" by Alicia Keys. So if you guys like three uh, three over four tunes or like a nice classic waltz feel, uh, excuse me, check out um, "Songs Made Easy" after this. And after that, we have one on one coaching. Exclusively for all of you awesome UU Plus members. Uh, thank you so much for downloading this as a podcast. If you're listening to us, thanks for watching. For all of you UU Plus subscribers, mahalo, and I will see you guys next time. Oh, mm, we're, not, well, yes. we're not back next week. Next right? time, yes. Yeah, so next time. See you next time. So, yeah. <laughs> November 1st. Or the 25th. Yes. Is yes. When yeah. That's right. That's when we special. <laughs> that's when we teleport back here. Special yeah. San Francisco. Special San Francisco epi- episode that um, looks exactly like this one. Yeah. Yeah. It looked exactly <laughs> with the same shirts and stuff. Probably the same kind of audio setup. You know, we'll yep. try to keep things consistent for you guys. Yep. Okay. Well, we'll see you next time. Aloha.